Welcome to the show. We have a great show today. I really think you're going to like it. It's a fun project. We're going to take a piece of scrap and turn it into a sort of post-apocalyptic survival weapon. So one of the cool things about being a hobbyist rather than maybe a professional blacksmith or a craftsman is that when you get an idea, you can just run with it. You don't need to come up with some practical justification. And this is definitely going to be one of those projects. Not to say that there couldn't possibly be a practical application for this, but the likelihood of the circumstances arising that would lead to this being a truly useful weapon or tool, probably pretty slim. With that said, sometimes those kinds of projects are the best. In my last video, I showed how to set up a backyard forge and start forging in just a couple of hours. For fun, we're going to go with that same forging method here today. Now, a few months ago, I found an unusual piece of scrap metal. It was L-shaped and threaded at one end. Over the last few months, I keep running into this thing in my scrap bin and thinking, I really should make something out of that. And I think today is the day. So first things first, if we want this to really hold an edge, it has to have enough carbon in the steel to take a proper hardening when we go to quench it. When you're dealing with a mystery steel like this, one method for testing carbon content is to put a grinder to it and see what kind of sparks come off. If you have long, thin sparks with no blooms, it's probably a very low carbon steel. And it's not likely to harden, at least it won't harden well. But if you have short sparks that end in kind of a blossom or a star-shaped sort of burst, that's a pretty good indication that the content of carbon is pretty high. It's at least worth giving it a shot. And since this will be more of a novelty item than something I regularly plan to use, Having any kind of a decent edge is probably adequate for me. So now it's time to get forging. Again, we'll be using really basic tools for this. Nothing you see here is going to be particularly expensive. I'm using a blow dryer to force air into my forge. I'm using charcoal and wood as my fuel. And mostly I'll be using a piece of this half-inch plate steel. I've found that this has a little bit harder surface than my $15 Harbor Freight anvil. So sometimes I can actually get better results forging off of this surface than I can with the anvil. As I've mentioned in the past, it can be a little bit hard in broad daylight to really see how hot the steel is. I try to get at least a little bit of a visible glow and then bring it out and give it a few whacks with the hammer to see if it's soft. Usually, if you can see any glow at all in daylight, the workpiece is probably up to a decently workable temperature. Now for most of this work, I'm just using a claw hammer. This one I think is 16 ounces. You know, I'm not doing really heavy work here. This isn't a big, thick piece. I think it's 5 eighths. So I don't necessarily need a lot of weight behind each blow to move this steel. It's worth noting that everything I'm doing with this particular piece of scrap, you could also do with rebar. Get a half inch or five eighths inch rebar or whatever thickness you want, heat it up, put a 90 degree bend in it, and you basically have the same shape that I started out with. Now for this one, I am gonna quench in water. Now I'm not a metallurgist, but my understanding is that if you have lower carbon content in steel, it's typically better to quench with water than with oil but I will leave the edge here a little bit thick so that it's less likely to crack and warp. You'll notice that the blade area of the weapon here is actually responding really well to the metal file I'm using. That probably means we didn't get a really good hard heat treat on it. Ordinarily, I would want to temper this for maybe half an hour, an hour at 400, 450 degrees. But considering that it doesn't seem to have taken a real high hardness anyway, I think we'll leave that for now. I do end up tempering the whole thing later, but that was mostly just to darken it up before I put the final edge on. But in this particular case, I'd say this is not gonna be a very brittle steel. Probably the carbon content was a little lower than what I was thinking to begin with, and we didn't get a whole lot of hardening here. Still, for our purposes, I think it will work just fine. Now, I wanted to keep the threads as kind of a feature of the finished weapon, but I wanted to clean them up a little bit because I knew that grinder had messed them up a little. So I started working this on the sander. I just sort of grind it down a little and even it up, but I realized I had gone a little deeper with the grinder than I had hoped. So I decided to heat it back up again and forge out that deep gouge and try to bring the whole thing back to round. Now this part just took a little patience. I was having a little trouble keeping heat in the forge, just putting sticks in there, and eventually I ran and got some charcoal again that forge just kept losing heat. It's kind of a, it's a little bit of a windy day and it's cooler out. So I did get a little frustrated with that, but I managed to get the heat I needed. Now for this part, I do have to use the anvil because I need to be up off the ground a little bit. 
to get the 90 degree bend that I will need at the very end of the handguard. So after putting that bend in there, it's time to bend the whole thing back around so that the handguard forms back and meets the shaft of the hatchet. This part's a little bit tricky. If you wind up getting it too large, it really doesn't provide a good grip or a good secure grip. But of course, if you get it too small, you're not gonna be able to fit your hand in there. So as you'll see, I had some difficulty with that. And one of the things I realized was that that end piece that I had forged in was just a little bit too long. So I couldn't really bring the handguard all the way back as far as I wanted to, to meet up with the shaft of the hatchet. So I brought it in, cut that part off, and then spent a little more time with the hammer, reforging, reshaping, opening things back up, pounding again, reshaping. It really shouldn't have been this difficult, but sometimes when you get a certain part of the geometry wrong at the beginning, it kind of winds up creating a hassle later. Now at this point, really the project is pretty much done. If you wanted to leave it there, you could. You certainly have a cool looking and, and really a functional little hatchet that you made from a scrap of steel. But I really felt like taking this a step further. I don't know if it's because we're in the month of October or, you know, favorite zombie shows are coming back on or what the deal is, but uh, there's something that just really made me want to take this to the next level. So you'll see me do some stuff here that, you know, probably has some limited practicality, but I really think it adds a certain aesthetic to the look of this kind of fantasy weapon. Although I definitely wouldn't want to get hit with any part of it. So here I'm using my wire feed welder to build up some studs on the handguard, which will add a little bit of a mean look to it, maybe a little functionality in an actual fight. And I'll also put a little, uh, I'll call it a pumpkin crusher here, on the sort of pommel area of the weapon. So with those studs built up, I have the steel I need, but it's also pretty ugly. So I went back in with a file, tried to clean them up a little bit. I'm not really looking to put a sharp point on them but I do want it to be a little bit more angular rather than just sort of a weld bead sitting on top there. And of course, after all of that filing and grinding, the metal is kind of shined up. And in a way, that's kind of a cool look, but I was going for something a little bit more grungy. So what I did is I brought it in and threw it in the oven at 500 degrees for a good hour. And that brought the color back to about a almost a purple, like a deep blue, almost like a gun blue type of color. That also had the added benefit if there was any over hardening in any part of it. A good hot temper like that should bring it back to a real flexible, tough metal. So with that done, I brought it back out and I thought a little bit about what I wanted for just the finishing touches on this. I had to admit that once I had those studs on there, I, I don't know, I just didn't like the aesthetic of a smooth little rounded blade with this really you know, wicked looking studded handguard. So I reprofiled the blade, uh, made it a little bit more angular. Something looked like it was clearly designed to you know, puncture through a hard barrier like a shell of a pumpkin. Hey, we gotta be careful what we say. I don't know how much you guys know about Adpocalypse, but let me just say Big Brother is watching. Start going into a bunch of zombie talk and before you know it, you're gonna get demonetized. Now, just to simplify things, I put the edge on using my uh, 1x30 belt grinder. You can pick one of these up at Harbor Freight for about $60 or $70. I think it's a pretty reasonable buy. I've had a few issues with it, had to tinker with it a little, but definitely not bad for the price. Very versatile tool. But of course, there are a million ways you could put an edge on this. And really, with that metal file, you could probably put an edge on almost as simply as with a power tool. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, that's about all we have time. I'm just kidding. We're going to go out and bust some pumpkins with this thing. So there you have it. If the apocalypse comes in the form of, uh, I don't know, alien pumpkin invaders, I am so ready for them, and they won't know what hit them. Well, thank you for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you followed along, I hope you had fun building this. I'm here about two to three times a week. I'd love to have you as part of my community. Absolutely, please do subscribe to the channel, and have a wonderful day. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, have fun, and we'll see you in the next video.